anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. I, I may have spilled some. Yeah, I was going to say that, that that there was a little more that came out of that one this time. Listen, whenever I do it like energetically, because I'm trying to get the pop for the podcast, um, I it, it always we always get a little bit extra. I always get a little bit extra. Speaking of a little extra. All right. I'm going to judge, judge your I'm going to judge your transition. All right. <laughs> Not as good as previous ones, but. Uh, Speaking of extra more, more camp news. More camp news, extra, extra camp news today here. How about that? Three and a half. Three and a half. I'll do better. And that's out of 10. That's out Um, of 10, just so we're clear. So this week two, one and a half in in the books right now for Ohio State with, uh, with camp here and yeah, lots of, lots of information related to, to position battles, to uh, interviews with the coaches, to some some sickness with the team here, and uh, a little a little behind the behind the curtains about a uh, about the Whoops. Saturday scrimmage here. Everything's fine. Keep talking. I didn't do anything wrong. All right. <laughs> Nothing bad just <laughs> happened. I promise. All right. I, I trust you, Jared. Uh, all right. So let, let's let's go ahead and start with. Um, Let's talk about the the coaches here and what they had to say about their their position their positions here. Um, first off, here let's talk about the O line. The O line here earlier earlier in the week here, uh, some of you may have seen seen things going around here that yes, the O line did catch most of them did catch some sort of virus. I believe that coach day called it a, a funky virus. <laughs> so you, you may, you may hear like funky First, virus um, being thrown around here for the next few weeks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's, where's gangland when we need him? Why well, I, I need a definition. Oh, look at that. Esquire is already on it. Tagging gangland. Chief Medical Officer here to assess the long-term impact of funky virus. Thank you, Esquire, for for handling that, uh, for for reaching out to our medical core, our Sloopcast medical correspondent, one Mr. Gangland. Yeah. Uh, A lot of reporters seeing multiple people vomiting (laughs) on the field there, Um, some heading to the locker room, but... uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of pe- a lot of people. Uh, Deontay Armstrong, Fitzpatrick, Hinsman, McLaughlin, um, Simmons, maybe more, all, all had all a, got the uh, this funky virus. Of some I, sort it feels here. it feels like an especial attack to the center position. Oh, maybe. I mean, everybody's around the center, so that's a valid point. But it just it got McLaughlin and Hinsman at the same time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, later on, I have down way in the notes here. I'll just, I guess, I'll just mention it now. Uh, good news is that they're they are all pretty much back for the the Saturday scrimmage there. Okay. Uh, so so that's good news that they got it out of their system there. But yeah, sounds like they got it out of their system in more ways than one. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, some other things that was pointed out that from some of the reporters here. We've seen it in previous years, but this year is definitely a lot different. Uh, extra protection for the for the Ohio State players here. Yeah, it, a few years ago, uh, it was a an option for some of the players to wear what's called the guardian caps. You may have seen like it's this big, almost like red. Um, it's soft padding soft to go pad, on soft top pad. of the hard pad. Hmm. Yeah, so th- so that was a, um, like I said, it wasn't mandatory in years past, but this year Day's making it mandatory for every player. Uh, yeah. For for this year, uh, he he's talked to their uh, their their medical staff, their doctor, and they he gave advice that hey, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt, <laughs> it's not gonna hurt uh, adding extra protection for for practice for the scrimmage for. How long here? 
how long till we see this or something like this make its way into the actual game? If we are in Ooh. fact seeing, you know, a 10% reduction, 20% Ooh, yeah. reduction, if both players are wearing it, how long until we see this or something mm -hmm. like this make its and way into the actual game? And more importantly, NFL shows that NFL data shows that having this extra protection results in 50 percent reduction in concussions during tra training camps. So, so yeah, good question. Well, and I, know, I, I, know the players... I had seen I had seen this earlier in the week and I was I asked the people in the discord and I did some Googling around myself. Why not wear these? And I found a couple answers. Yeah, I want to hear them. One is that it is keeping in an extra bit of heat. Yeah. So if you're not a in a training and it's heat, keeping the heat right around the head. So in a non-training camp, in a game situation where, you know, you, I, I don't, I don't got to tell anyone who ever played, even at the high school level, games just different than practice. As far as the fatigue and, and just the effort, I, I don't got to tell anyone games just different than practice. Just the level of exhaustion, the level of conditioning, you know, they call it, you know, the player has to get in game condition. That phrase exists for a reason, right? So that's one possible answer. The other thing I wonder about is if it makes it easier for, you know, and I'm not saying purposefully, I'm saying accidentally for a tackler to grab and, tw you know, could we be introducing potential neck issues if it's something that can be sort of grabbed onto? It's like, you know, if the entire helmet is is covered in a a, a face mask of sorts, something that can be gripped. And I don't know how well it can or can't be gripped, to be honest with you. Um, but, I, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question and maybe there's a good answer. You know, maybe it's something that needs to be addressed in future iterations of the Guardian cap. You know, maybe the Guardian cap, as we know it right now, is a little too big, a little too clunky, a little too insulating to be worn during game days. So I'm not saying, oh, my God, why aren't they doing this right now? They should be doing this right now. It's irresponsible not to be doing it right now. That's not what I'm saying. I'm asking, you know, if this is the first, I don't know, first generation Guardian cap. What what point, you know, second gen, third gen, fourth gen, will this be a thing that people are not just wearing in practice, but during the games as well. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting for for the next few years. See see what see what comes from it here. Uh, all right, moving on to the linebackers. Uh, James Laurinaitis took to the stands there, asked a bunch of questions here. So here's kind of the the rundown of what was what was said here. Um, he feel he feels the depth at the will position is pretty fluid. Likes what he has there. It says both Styles and Hicks are both physical, physically impressive players. Style brings coverage ability, and Hicks brings the blitz and um, turns the corner, so to speak, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so re really, really good hear hearing that about the the Will linebacker. Um, related Zach, to oh, sorry, real quick. Zach down in the chat makes a good point. Uh, maybe the helmet will have to be innovated to fit it. So instead of it being something added on to the helmet, it's something that should be integrated into the helmet, which makes a lot of sense to me, knowing nothing. Just saying. Jonathan Taylor wore it today during a preseason game. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's something to watch out for. I think it's an interesting innovation that now has some solid numbers behind it we'll see yep 
All right. Um, staying on the linebackers here, uh, James Laurinaitis talks, talking about power, saying that he seems to have more confidence. Um, Laurinaitis pushing him to make the right calls at that mic position. So he's really he's really working on powers being the guy the the coordinator so to speak on the field there for for the defense there so good good to see Laurinaitis spending some time with powers to try to make him understand what needs to be done and make the right calls there well sure because he's playing for he's playing for time right like I, I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think he's gonna surplant Cody Simon this year uh, I think it's Cody Simon's the mic this year, but injuries happen. But even aside from injuries, you know, does Gabe Powers get in for 10% of the reps, 15% of the reps, 20% of the reps, even though starting isn't, again, aside from an injury, I don't think Gabe Powers is going to steal the starting spot from Cody Simon. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that there's nothing to work for. Again, it's to what degree are you splitting reps? That's, you know, it's 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 sometimes people get really super caught up on starting versus not starting as if it's a binary thing. When, you know, and statistically it is a binary thing. Either you start or you don't. But at the end of the day, there are reps to fight for. Yep, yep. 20%. Would be uh, below everyone would I yeah I, I'm either not reading that right or you did twenty percent would be I'm way below we blow everyone I you know I'm I'm moving on I one of us are messing up I don't know which one of us all right um finishing up at the finishing out the uh, the linebackers here. Talks Fair about enough, Pierce Gangland. being a Pierce Pierce being a scrapper player can handle multiple linebacker positions. Uh, Stover says he can he can flat out run. Says the Stover boys are tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then last last comment about Hicks uh, said he spent spent time spent time with Hicks to just pull the trigger. Um, he just just makes things happen. Spent time to quote just pull the trigger. How how do you interpret that, Kyle? I take that as I take that as follow your instincts and just go for it. Not not hesitate. I agree. Stop, think, more, go. Yes. <laughs> yep. Trust your eyes. A, a, exactly. a little less thinky, a little more hitty. Yep. All right, running backs here. Uh, honestly, I don't think we've talked. I know we've talked some about the running backs uh, past few weeks here, but honestly, like. I, I don't think there's not enough love being talked about the, with the running backs here. Uh, right. So we got we got to talk about new new running back coach uh, Carlos Lachlan here. Uh, yeah, yeah. See what he says here about the running backs. He starts off talking about he feels very confident with the freshman Peoples and Williams Dixon. Um, mm. Feels that they're on on a good track. Right now, as as true freshmen coming into the program, uh, talks about Judkins being very gifted, a powerful runner, and is a sponge with a great attitude. Yeah, I and mean, go, we, we, I think we talk a little less about the running backs. I don't just mean we as in Kyle and I, but like the Buckeye media sphere uh, that we very distantly it's orbit. Like, it's like um, the best duo running backs in the country. Like yeah, it, it should get a little more talk about here. Here's OK, but Kyle, it's like we always talking about, uh, you know, and, and Judkins is, of course, new to the program, but they're both known commodities. Like, I don't think you're not going to get a lot of clicks. They're not being the shiny like, freshmen. Right. The shiny freshmen are going to get the because like who's going to win the position battle? It doesn't matter. They're both going to get a ton of reps. OK, everyone, it turns out Trey Henderson and Quinchon Judkins are really good. No shit. You know what I mean? It's 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 a little bit more difficult to write stories about known commodities. Um, there was a good story um, about Henderson who who had like a mental lapse in practice 
back uh, during one of the beat one of the one of the open practices that all the beat reporters got to go towards. And he apparently ran past the he's like, this is what happens when you make a mistake. Just sort of goofing with the meat. It's a, you know, it's stuff like that that gets mentioned again. They're, they're known commodities. We know they're going to be great. Um, that being said, um, Alex Gleitman, formerly of you have this quote, Kyle. Um, I, don't, I don't know if his exact quote, but um, said something along uh, formerly of Buckeye Huddle, now over at Letterman Row. Um, said essentially that the uh, Kyle, do you have the exact? Well, it's Kelly Kelly and um, Chip Kelly and um, and Lachlan were working to get working together to let me, let me find this here. They were working together to quote, change the running game. Uh, but Gleitman, I believe, said something about the offense, about the running game being completely different, completely transformed, a massive improvement over last year. Uh, and we talked a bit about. Yeah. And yeah, he said he said that um, noted, he consistently heard from people who have watched the practice uh, on how the running game is vastly improved and noticeably different in a good way. And that seems to have been apparent once again uh, during uh, Saturday's scrimmage. Losing Kevin Wilson, but gaining Chip Kelly. I mean, yeah, there, there was obviously a year in between the two, um, which I think is why we saw a day burn out so hard last year. So, um, so how, not, how I'm taking this, Jared, how I'm yeah, taking this, changing the running game. Yeah. Changing the running game. Yeah. Wing T. No. <laughs> no. No, no, I don't think so. Kyle, um, I, I think it's just it's just the Chip Kelly influence. I, I think I a, a lot. I mean, I know, you know, I know you're kidding, but. I think a lot of the problems with the offense last year. Was that I mean, Kevin Wilson was obviously already gone, but Kevin Wilson was like a was a was a, a very pass heavy offensive coordinator his entire career. You have Ryan Day, a very passive offensive coordinator, his entire career, former quarterbacks coach. You have, uh, you know, they, they brought Brian Kelly in as an offense or not, excuse me, um, Brian Hartline to be a offensive coordinator last year after Kevin Wilson left and he's a former wide receiver, a very pass minded guy. They needed, they needed someone who was run minded. And as, as much as like Chip Kelly is known as like a Chip, Chip Kelly is a lot more similar to urban Meyer in schematically because they're both very spread them out to run coordinators. That 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 is the type of spread that you see from both Chip Kelly and Urban Meyer. A, a lot of the times, people would associate spread offenses with like air raid offenses, and an air raid is a type of spread. West Coast, but it's a type of spread. Uh, it's actually very uh, Texas based. The air, the air raid, very Texas based, um, but. Return of the power spread is going to hit like crack. Uh, yeah, and, and I and I think that's. I, I don't know if I'd use it. I, I mean, hell, I guess maybe power spread might be the the correct terminology, but I think that's what we're going to see this year because we have a pair of quarterbacks who are very good runners. We have Chip Kelly. And we have two really, really good running backs and we need an offensive line that is good, but needs a little bit of help. Yep. The, the, the offensive line is good, but not great. The offensive line is in a position where it's never going to be like, well, we don't have to outthink them. We can just outwork or out push them out muscle them. And that, that's not who this offensive line is. The offensive line isn't that good. So you are going to have to outthink them. You are going to have to out. Play call them at times, depending upon who you're playing. 
all of that to say is that Chip Kelly actually brings that expertise to the room where it has not been in a, in a minute. Yep, we, we have a guy who can be a real true run game coordinator in Chip Kelly. It's going right. to hit uh, right in the early Meyer era nostalgia, but with actual superstars. Yeah. I, I think this is good. I think this is good uh, time for a quick break here. So, uh, uh, yeah, we will take a quick break. If you want to go to avoid these breaks, head on over to the sloopcast.com where you can, um, or excuse me, over at Patreon. The you, com where you can, you can also and, go to the sloopcast.com and find links to all of these things. You can, yes, um, to become a patron and to avoid these avoid these uh, ads here. So we'll go ahead and take a quick ad break and be right back. And we're back. What's next up all on right, the docket, Kyle? Let us talk about the wide receivers. Right from the running backs to the wide receivers and uh, see what Brian Hartline has to say. And he starts off talking about uh, Ibuka and Howard, um, t- t- talking about how tremendous confidence uh, that he has between the two. Uh, goes, on, goes on to talk about how the chemistry seems to be really building there and is expecting a lot of great things uh, for the, for this fall here. A little bit about Carnell Tate. Uh, says so far here, he believes that he can play pretty much anywhere. Uh, never makes the same mistake twice. He's very clean on his mechanics and footwork uh, and has tough hands as well. Ho- hopefully we see see some Carnell Tate uh, sprinkled in in this offense this year from everything that I'm reading. Uh, Brandon Innes, uh also talks about Brandon Innes uh, being a leader among the team and is actually voted by all his fe- all his peers, excuse me, onto the uh, onto the the group's uh, leadership cons- council as well too. So a lot of great leadership. It sounds like from the wide receiver group here, and just yeah, it's going to be fun watching this this uh, this group this season. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a take a piece a little piece of this right. I need to stand over here. Um, Carnell Tate, quote, can play anywhere. Going to go ahead and reiterate what I have been reiterating as people keep talking about, oh, is Emeka Ibuka or Carnell Tate going to be the outside player and who's going to be the inside slot guy? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I think they're both going to play both. I think Jeremiah Smith is very much, you know, he's a freshman. And of course I hear he's like a hard worker and everything. So, you know, I might be underestimating him just because he's a freshman, but maybe, maybe Jeremiah Smith can like just learn one spot, get, get Jeremiah Smith really to just really learn and lock down one spot. But then you have far more senior players in Tay Dabuka and Ennis who will, you know, learn all of the spots. Because as much as, again, you have a new offensive coordinator in Chip Kelly, I don't think you're going to see a massive change in the passing schema or in the vocabulary. Uh, I, 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 you know, the offensive linemen are probably, and the running backs are probably learning a lot of new stuff. And I think it's probably going to be pretty much just the running backs or excuse me, the wide receivers doing their wide receiver things. Yep, uh, I don't, yep. I, I don't have a whole lot of concern there. So I don't either. You got Abuka, you got Tate, you got Ennis. And I think they're going to learn all three spots or all four spots or however many. I think they're just going to learn it all. And yep. Jeremiah Smith can just sort of lock down one of the outside spots. That's how I see this breaking down. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. It gives you a lot of disguisability uh, and it lets you work with your packages a lot more when 
you know, maybe a mech is the slot guy or maybe Cardinal Tate's the slot guy or maybe Brandon is Brandon Ennis is the slot guy who's going to be outside. How does, you know, if the cornerback over there, who's he supposed to line up again? You know, you can play with that stuff, especially, like I said, when you have your older guys, well, you know, we think we can count Tate as in, you know, he's, he's not a freshman as a, you know, I, 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 th- I once again, I think we all get and I conclude myself in this a little too caught up about depth chart and who's starting and yada, yada, yada. Ryan Day has been talking since spring that, you know, with the added playoff games, with the extra long season that they have to prepare for, you're going to see much deeper rotation. Yeah, no, absolutely. We don't absolutely. have to get we, super we, we, hung up on who and who is not starting. And we mentioned a couple of weeks ago about the rumor that sounded like it's going to happen of changing from 85 scholarship to 105. Yeah, yeah. As well. No longer a rumor, of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what I said, right. gangland, but I'll, right, I'll let everyone else enjoy that. All right. The defensive backs, Jared. Oh, we got Caleb Downs uh, in the thumbnail today. We do, yes. But actually, not, not much talk about Caleb Downs, but he's ah. he doesn't need need a doesn't need a lot to to uh, to be he's, talked about because he he just he does he does great things out there from everything that we've heard. Is he? Well, how how are we feeling about Caleb Downs as a running back? Rumors which have been around since the spring. Um. Well, where was this at here? Um, Gangland says this. bullshit. <laughs> Actually, um, I didn't. I didn't mention this. So Carlos uh, Lachlan uh, did actually talk about that Carlos Downs rumor, and he, he pretty much deflected that and said, um, "Yeah, I have no decision if he'll play some running back." <laughs> so no, nothing's being talked about. I, you know, I never and bought it. He shouldn't. He, he shouldn't. He really shouldn't. I mean, there's been a the defensive side. As as we talked about when we were talking about the running backs, we're we're getting a lot of positive news, a lot of positive feedback as far as James Peoples and Sam William Dixon are concerned. So, you know, if there were more of a concern at that position, you know, if maybe the freshmen weren't showing up and being really, really good, we might be having a different conversation there. Um, they, uh, the, um, I'm going to forget his name. We did lose the walk on. Can someone help me out here? Um, the walk on running back who we lost to a knee injury already. I can't remember his name. A guy who we, I think we, in many ways, um, EC Caffey, thank you. Uh, who I think we expected to get a, you know, not not necessarily a ton of carries, but like, I think we expect, I, I personally expected him to be running back number three for the entire season. Obviously not going to happen now. And you already have two really good running backs, but what if one of them gets hurt? You know, again, we're talking about keeping a deep rotation going this season. Anyway, we're not talking about running backs. We're talking about defensive backs. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah. All right. Uh, so Tim Walton, Tim Walton talks, um, talking about his his uh, defensive backs or the BIA, as they like to call themselves here. And I mean, I think so more so this year than than past years here. They're the best in he America believe- this year. Yeah, he, he believes that no this, one can tell this me otherwise. Here, he believes this group he has five or six quarters. He feels comfortable of playing today. If, I, if there was a game today, he feel about five or six, five or six of those uh, fellows. I, I totally. I we were having that conversation last week at the end of the episode mm-hmm. where I was saying how many teams in the Big Ten would take, you know, Ohio State's second string defense over their starting defense. Calvin yep. Simpson Hunt is not a backup. He is a starter in waiting. Jeremiah, uh, Jer- Jermaine Matthews Jr. is a not, he's not a backup. He's a starter in waiting. Jordan Hancock, we can talk about how he's a safety in this defense all we want. He's a goddamn cornerback, and we all know it. He's just a nickel corner. Oh, no, Jared. He's a Robert. Shut up. He's a corner. Um, Lorenzo Styles, 
is a starter in waiting. Um, that's six guys right there and didn't even touch uh, an incredibly talented group of freshmen. Didn't even talk about Aaron Scott and the other young guys who I think are going to get snaps this year. Yeah. Well, he did talk about Aaron Scott. He says he's been very competitive, very coachable, and has a lot of energy. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's a, it's a lot of, a lot of talent in front of Aaron Scott right now. But he, right, I, I think I think we'll, we'll he'll he'll see some time on the field, especially from what you were mentioning earlier about if Ohio State goes deep into the playoffs here. Uh, we'll, you, we'll, need, we'll need more. We'll need more more guys to to you, get some more reps. You have to play all season with the mentality that you're going to go deep into the playoffs. So even if you mm-hmm. don't go deep into the playoffs, which by the way is the expectation, just so we're clear, th- this is a national championship or bust season for Ohio State. Just so we're clear. But it's not if you go deep into the playoffs, you have to prepare in September and October and November that you are going to go deep into the playoffs by rotating your players, you know, more aggressively this year than you have in years past. You have to do that no matter what. Also talks a little bit about Lorenzo Styles Jr. He says that he's all healthy and good to go. Still has a yellow jersey on, but he's. He's all healthy now. So that's Excellent. that's great to hear. Yellow. Uh, we shouldn't should we be allowing yellow jerseys in the I know, I know. it's not bl- I know it's not I know. blue. I need, I need I need to question that. I need to question that. Um can we, can we do green? I, I, I thought the quarterbacks typically wore no black. Quarterbacks wore black. Quarterbacks wore black. Hmm. Hmm. I, I I don't I don't think we should be using blue or yellow jerseys right. in the day day. And I, I know Urban Meyer wouldn't be happy seeing some. I know it's typically blue, Ur- like you Urban, said, Jerry. Urban, Urban yellow. reserved his smoke for blue, but yeah. I I, 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 I mean I, I guess I'll give I guess I'll I'll say yes. Yellow yellow is more like caution. Like it's you see yellow. You see yellow more than like. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it, but orange green and all that. But uh, you, you use that high vis orange. What says don't hit sure. this more than than the color of a traffic cone? Sure. So I'm saying, right, uh, Denzel Burke also. Uh, there, there was a lot of players that also Listen, got um, guys. You, you asked, asked a lot of questions. This is a questions. football podcast. You can't keep playing the phrasing game on me. It's impossible. Can't do that lot, with Georgia. Pl- <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, a lot, lot of a lot of the players got uh, asked a lot of questions. I didn't I didn't put in the notes here of of any of the players, but I did put Denzel Burke here because he he's the experience. He's he's the he's the he's the he's the guy on the defensive backside here. So um, I did pull a few things from what he 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 had to talk about. He said that he feels that this group of corners and safeties he feels. Feel with the group of corners and safeties surrounding him. He feels really comfortable. Communication is really at an all-time high. Um, all, they all appear to be on the same page. Mixing a lot of stuff, and it's going to be a great year. There we go. Also, also says a little bit here. about a little bit about Carnell Tate. I know we talked about Tate just a little bit ago. Um, he, he spoke highly of Tate, uh, saying that he's a really good player. Minds him a little bit of T. Higgins. T. Higgins. Hmm. Take that for what it's worth. Oh, uh, and the la- last thing here, uh, corner, cor- quarter, corner, quarter backs. Uh, Will Howard here. Uh, Will Ho- Howard <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> I-, I only added this in just because it was it's just funny knowing um coach coach Mick. And the kind of guy he he really is. Uh, so when How- Howard came in, he said that he was about two forty nine when he got here, and now now he's around two thirty three, two thirty five. But when he when he got in, he said that Coach Mick had some had some choice words with him. 
<laughs> got got him to to the weight where he he should be for his size. There we go. Um, Esquire in the chat says allegedly the only corner to pick off Howard Denzel has more abdominal muscles than I was aware existed. Uh, uh, completely impossible to throw on this team. Oh, are you saying uh, the only person to pick off Howard is Denzel and the person with more abdominal muscles than you're aware existed is Igbenosin, I think is what you're saying. Uh, completely impossible to throw on this team. I mean, yeah, and we have, that's not even taking into effect or Jordan Hancock, Caleb Downs or Lathon Ransom. Right, and some, and some, um, and some black stripes, Jared. We we have three black stripes since uh, that that came off this week here. Jalen McLean, safety, uh, uh, defensive that's end, a, Houston. That's a Edrick. starter. That's a starter in waiting right there too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I also think defensive end Houston Edrick as well. <laughs> Who I will always want to call and, Edrick Houston, just, mm-hmm. just. I was just going to plant that flag right now. I'm going to do it. I'm just, gonna, I'm just letting everyone know. I'm going to mess that up. And At least we only have James one Pete. Roger slash Rogers at the wide receiver position now. Because that was going to ruin me. One of them and left. Brown. Remember the few years we always had, <laughs> had Brown at running back or, or wide receiver? Or, 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 or safety. We had... We had two Philly Browns at the same time. And then, yeah, anyway. Could we average and, uh, giving up fewer than 100 passing yards per game? That's, that, that's, that, that seems. That's lofty, especially, especially if you uh, get up now, on teams big and they start throwing yes. the ball frequently yes. To, yes. to say 100 passing yards per game feels that that's a that's a huge bar like you are you could we average giving up fewer than 100 passing yards per game no could we work towards having several games in which you do that sure hey sun card starters only stats i don't know how you quantify that um we'd probably pull our starters before they'd pull their starters. So who is the next right guard? It's a live asks look at cast. That. And the last black stripe, Jared up uh, is James peoples. Uh, who we already talked about as a, um, someone who we're feeling very confident will be the third running back on yep. this team, which, you know, again, with Caffey getting hurt, gave him the opportunity, but it sounds like, you know, it's not going to be simply a gifted opportunity, but one he's also going to earn. So that's the, that's the 12th player. That is the 12th player with their black stripes removed. All right. Before we go into the uh, scrimmage here, uh, we're going to go ahead and take one more ad break here. Uh, So yeah. uh, Patreon, blah, 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 all that stuff. If you don't want to listen. So, uh, We'll be right back. Love the way we phone it in on the second ad break. Every time. Doesn't matter if I'm doing it. Doesn't matter if you're doing it. Doesn't matter if we split them up. We always just totally phone in the second ad break. All right. All right. Let, let's 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 pull back that that curtain here a little bit here from from the Saturday scrimmage here, Jared. It's, sure, it, sure. As we're recording this, it's still. Can I, can I answer Suncard's question? Suncard has to. Asked a lineman question, and I want to answer it. All right, go ahead. Uh, He asked, who's going to be the right guard? Right now, I would bet on Carson Hensman. That's, I wouldn't say that's a sure thing, but that is who I'd put my money on right now. Can I ask for season predictions for Julian Fleming, please. I've not been following Penn State camp. I I, I don't know what to say there. Um, I think a lot of that will depend upon um, if the passing game looks better. Just in general. 25 receptions, 850 yards, and seven touchdowns. Very specific answer from Kyle. 
<laughs> not sure where you got that. Can Drew Aller, uh, Drew Aller throw a deep ball? Will he be allowed to? Yeah, he's being hammed. Just about to say, will the offensive line let him? Or the coaching staff? I, I might be, I might be biased because he's an Ohio kid who I really like. So I might be biased here. But oh, I'm I'm still I, I, I really, for as well. Just, just I really not the, just not the one game. <laughs> just not the one game there. Just not for the one game. I I really I really think Franklin and Franklin's offense is really hamstringing Aller. Yeah. That's that's all. All right, let's let's get to the Saturday scrimmage. So there's not much published out there related to the scrimmage here. So I'm pulling some stuff from um, Alex Gleitman um, that he posted over at on three's website here. Hold on. Uh, Esquire says Aller has the best media PR. Like everyone is convinced that he was hamstrung and isn't just shitty. Yeah. Me included. Why? Because we've seen James Franklin ruin five-star quarterbacks before. To, to, to just keep it 100 with you. Yeah. Hackenberg was supposed to be the next guy. Five-star, all everything. He was average at best as a college football quarterback. But thrived with Tra Trace McSorley. I th thrived is a relative term. What direction is Aller from? Uh, northeast. I, I, if everyone is saying it, I get, and here's the other thing about Aller. Aller start is sometimes a guy gets anointed a five star young, and then everyone just sort of keeps them a five star because they were a five star and they kind of he came up the charts late through camps, through everything else. Like, I really feel like he earned that fifth star. Uh, anyway, I, I don't disagree with the assessment. It's just funny that everyone at every level of media fully buys that Franklin is ruining him so completely. That there's basically no discussion on the other hand, uh, on the other end. Which is rare in the talking head world. Yeah, when the small indies like us and the big powerfuls over at Pick Your Outlet are all lockstep on James Franklin Ruins quarterbacks, it's probably for a reason. Mm hmm All right, let's let's get over to what um what Alex posted here. So in regards to the quarterback from what What's been reported, but to no surprise, Howard continues to be to look like the guy. Uh, Define that could for see me. As soon, could, yeah, could see as soon as Thursday, that day may name a starter for the quarterback as soon as Thursday. And, and yeah, and it's Howard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for the running back, I mentioned Services this already. Wendy's. Uh Kelly and Lachlan working to changing the running game. Running game is vastly improved and noticeably different in a good way. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah. When we talked about that the has been covered. Wide, wide receivers. Oh, like a backpack rapper. Um, I have heard the term backpack rapper before. Does that simply mean independent? I thought there was a different connotation to that, but also I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, Bryson Rogers had a really good scrimmage here. Um, had a had a touchdown during the scrimmage. Jeremiah Smith, to no one's surprise, had a good day. Surprised to hear how good he was, though, at blocking on the edge. Not, nice. not only not only catching the ball, but being able to block as well. Uh, Ennis and Ballard also getting good praises from coaches as well during the scrimmage. I mean, so, Ballard praises was all, praises all around. Rogers and Ballard were two guys who were challenged 
to step things up by Ryan Day publicly, which we don't see Day publicly call out guys too often. Um, and by the way, I predicted on last week's show that David Adolph would probably be getting a scholarship, and he has gotten a scholarship. Thank you very much. Are you not entertained? Okay. Um, mentioned if the, if the definition the, of about... backpack means independent, underground, and gritty, yes, I, I will accept that definition. Esquire, we, right, don't, we don't. We don't. Line, men- we don't. We don't. We don't got to make the obvious jokes. We can be better than that. Men- mentioned mentioned that the offensive line appears to all be back for this scrimmage here to um, all gone away with the funky virus right guard is still really competitive for the notes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't doubt that for a moment, but that's, you know, Sun card asked, I said, best guess Carson Hensmith. That's, that's who I am putting my money on, but it's not, like, I feel very, I, I will stand here and confidently say Josh Simmons, Donovan Jackson, Seth McLaughlin, Josh Fryer. I, I, I'll i just, whatever tiny bit of reputation I have, I'll stake on, on those being the starters at those positions. I'm just not nearly as confident about right guard. I, I money, if I had to put money on it, it's Hensman, but I, I, I wouldn't put money on it for the record. And then the defensive backs here, uh, all the groups are have that the um, that they're con- the consensus best unit on the team, and there really is no debate about it. Um, Thoughts on that? No, no debate that the defensive backs are the best unit on the team. I agree. I hey, for. For doing defensive backs as a whole? Yeah. I mean, again, I think there is a definitive top four wide receivers. We talked about that a lot on our last episode. It's Smith, Ennis, no particular order, obviously. Um, Emeka and Tate. Those are your top four guys, period. And we can have a lot of conversation about who the fifth guys are. But as far as the defensive back group is concerned, again, the two deep, 10 defensive backs, the two deep at defensive back is insane. What about the 1A and 1B of the running backs, though? I mean, but right after that, you go straight to true freshman. Yeah. Like all right, and, and the, the last last notes here, and then we can we can talk about what whatever else you, we, we want to hear, Jared. Well, we have uh, some ask sleep casts. And there are some ask sleep cast questions as well. Uh some chippiness among players, teammates, and Let's coaches. Go. Uh, but they were all healthy competitiveness. Yes. Uh chippiness. Yeah. Uh Mentions here, the last quote here is, this team has a different fire to it versus past teams that Ryan has had here. I can't fully describe it. It's just different in the attitude the team brings every single day. I mean, elephant in the room. This team doesn't want to lose to Michigan again. Yeah. I mean, that's that's straight up what it is. And... Kyle and I are very firmly on the record and have been since February that Michigan's going to suck this year. Even without NCAA rules and fraction, even if, even if none of that affects this season, which it could for the record, it could affect this season. But even if the, even if the NCAA says nothing, through the calendar year 2024 we, you know we already got punishments for harbaugh harbaugh's not on the team anymore whatever but even if the ncaa doesn't hand down any more punishments specifically a, like until the calendar year 2025 which again they might but even if they don't 
this Michigan team is going to suck. Period. They're not going to be no that good. No one on this Buckeye team, no one, Jared, no one on this team has beaten Michigan from players, player standpoint. That, that's, that, that can't be right. At least, at least from what I'm looking at from, at least from scholarship players, none of them. None. Hold on. Hold on. Um, I thought there was at least there's one. Nobody, 20... There's nobody from the 2019. There's no super seniors on here. That's no no scholars no scholarship players have have beat Michigan. There might be a walk on or two, but it does not. Uh, I thought Cody Simon was 2019, but I am incorrect. He's 2020. 2020. Mm-hmm. You can, right. you can you can but fact check me on here. I, I'm, I'm, no, I, I'm, I, have. I feel pretty confident. I feel half. I, 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 I have. Okay. Um, yeah. The yeah. I mean, it, it needs to be stated we didn't play Michigan in 2020 oh, it, because it they is. backed out. Yes. Yes. Correct. That needs to be said out loud. Yeah. So since we're talking about Michigan here and all my notes before we get into the questions here. I do love uh, Buckeye Twitter this Sunday here, Jared. I don't go a lot of Buckeye Twitter is um, pulling up receipts from 2011 and 2012, where all of the turns out sports fans are hypocrites. mm -hmm, Michigan uh, media, Michigan fans were calling on Trestle and him being a, a cheater and this and that. And, Buckeye, Buckeye fans kept kept receipts and is uh, pulling them. Has been pulling them up uh, this weekend. Two seven in the air, one eighty on the ground gives you four hundred and fifty total offense. I'm good with that. I, I don't think I don't think that's going to be the average. I I would be I would say against good competition. I think, again, this is, and this is, I've been saying this is going to look more like an Urban Meyer team than a Ryan Day team. I've said that several times this offseason so far. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back on an urbanism and say 200 and 200. That's what Urban said was his goals 200 and 200. And I feel like Tom's 220-220 going to hit a lot, I think. Yeah, I, I feel a lot better about 220-220 or 200-200, obviously, easier, um, than I do about 270-180. I, I don't feel like I don't feel like we're going to throw the ball all that much this year, especially against higher-level competition. I, I feel like this is going to be a team that runs first and second, and then we'll fuck you up with our wide receivers when the moment you stop paying attention. Earmuffs. Now we're we're fifty three minutes in. I'm I'm gonna curse. I try not to curse during like the first ten minutes because YouTube. After I get after I get past that, it's all fair game, man. It's all fair game after that. All right. Question time. Time for some Ask Luke Cast questions Please. here. We got we got about six minutes here. So all right. First question we have here is camp proving that even with their weaknesses, the core strength, specifically on defense and in the scope positions, will be able to mask our weaknesses. Is camp proving? That even with their weaknesses, the core strength, especially on defense and in the skill positions, will be able to mask our weaknesses. So our weaknesses as they stand right now, I would say, are the offensive line and maybe the quarterbacks. You're hearing a lot of good things about Will Howard. And I don't think he's going to be a weakness. I think he's going to be a good college football quarterback. But he's also not going to be C.J. Stroud. 
or Justin Fields or Dwayne Haskins. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We're looking more like JT Barrett here. Is going to be a closer comp to what we have gotten used to under Ryan Day. Again, this is going to be a very urban football team. By which I mean Urban Meyer, not urban as a code for something else. <laughs> um, it's going to be a very Urban Meyer football team. I don't think the offensive line is going to be our strength this year, especially if there are injuries, because we don't, especially at the tackle position. I feel like we have some depth at, at, at the interior offensive line. Um, I'm not confident about our, our depth at tackle. I'm not even fully confident about one of our starters at tackle, if I'm being real with you. But as we talked about earlier in the episode, I think Chip Kelly is a lot better at designing a run game to work in the offensive work towards the offensive line's strengths. So more so than the skill positions covering up for weaknesses in the offensive line, I think it's going to be coaching that better masks those weaknesses along the offensive line. All right. Um, another question. Predict which player or players the beat will be discussing this week after hearing reports he really showed out at the scrimmage. Uh, beat will be reporting, hearing early reports really showed out at the scrimmage. Um, I mean, we, we've heard some of these reports already, um, so it feels cheating to say it at this point. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, we, we've heard, heard some things about the wide receivers, about Rogers doing well in the scrimmages. We're hearing a lot of positives about James people showing out at scrimmages. Um, I, 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 you know, I, again, I feel like we've already heard those reports, so it's difficult to answer that honestly. Um, um, my, my person would be Bryson Rogers. Yeah. Um, Sun card in the chat. Will the defense be rotational or ride 13 guys out rotational? Uh, Ryan yep, rotation. day has been very vocal about making sure this team is ready for an extended season with multiple playoff games. Now on, you know, more than two playoff games now on the table with, you know, Oregon and Washington and USC being in the conference now with the general level of competition being higher from week in and week out that he needs to make sure that people stay healthy and stay energized and that he will be rotating more deeply this year. And quite frankly, they have the guys for it. Again, the second string offense or the second string defensive lineup for Ohio state could start at many, many, many programs wholesale all 11 of them better than the many and i'm not talking about mac teams i am talking about power four teams would trade their entire starting defensive 11 for ohio state's second string defensive 11 and i say that 